Yeah, so we were discussing that just this morning that um, FSCS is a is a fairly prevalent disease. And I think, you know, and I mentioned previously during the talk that um, a divider for FSGS, of course, has been the APOL1 status. And so you're going to have the APOL1 positive and the non-positive patients. And that's still going to lead a substantial number of people that really have very little options. Um, prednisone is really not used by most anyone today, certainly not by me. Um, CNIs, tacrolimus, and cyclosporin are still used, but you still have the same problem that long-term toxicity uh, when you maintain the drugs on there. So the answer to your question is yes, we've been desirous of having a new type of therapeutic pathway for quite some time. And I believe that the endothelial pathway is not necessarily restricted to FSGS or IgA. I think it's also a part of any form of CKD, including diabetic nephropathy. Yeah, so um, what they were able to demonstrate in the duplex trial is that um, they had a substantial reduction in proteinuria uh, above what you get with maximal RAS blockade. And we emphasize that the duplex trial did a very good job being executed and having such a high grade, uh, rate of RAS blockade and patient compliance. So it, it helps to legitimize the findings. So uh, above maximal ARB, you got an additional 13% or 14% reduction uh, in proteinuria. That's part of the issue. The data analysis where they looked at if you achieved a partial remission or a complete remission, and then your chance of progressing over the two-year period of time uh, to NSAID adrenal disease was amazing. So it was 3% if you had a partial remission. It was 2.1% if you had a complete remission. Now, those numbers seem to be similar, but there's a really important point behind that, which is that even a partial reduction in proteinuria has resulted in a profound reduction in uh, the risk of progression of renal disease. And lastly, it parallels the parasol data. And so from my standpoint, uh, I think this will be a significant weapon in the argument to change the uh, accepted clinical endpoints uh, for drug development. I suspect the drug development in FSGS will explode if that uh, ruling goes in through by the FDA. Well, it'll be a brand new arrow in the quiver, metaphorically. And uh, it's, uh, we already know that uh, when, as I said a moment ago, that the addition of an agent that blocks the ERA pathway on top of what is done with, um, with ARBs uh, is beneficial. Uh, but in the real world of CKD management, you'll have all the other players is there as well as mineralocorticoid antagonists, which I'm a big believer in, of course, the SGLT2s, and now the GLP1s are coming into it. And so what that collectively means is with these other agents, you can be looking at substantially slow rates of decline. So for example, uh, in most diabetic trials done with ARBs, the average decline in GFR is between six and six to seven mils per minute per year. Uh, and if you drop that number to one to 1 1.5 mils per minute per year, you have the potential of delaying dialysis by years at a stretch. And that's a huge thing in my mind. So I think, so um, as I've said to a lot of people, uh, that the ERAs are gonna be a, a, a new foundation stone, if you will, part of the, the triad of therapies for CKD, whether it be FSGS or IGA. And but for, for particularly for FSGS, mixing this drug with another agent that's able to uh, block uh, chronic inflammatory uh, changes in the kidneys, I think has the potential to be really helpful. And, and ERAs in combination with the April and BAF antagonists, I think will be very important. And uh, so that's something I'm looking forward to. And uh, Nefernet's always trying to do trials like that. 